I know it was a challenging one. Um, I appreciate everybody's uh, patience as we uh, went through it. So um, welcome again. Those I haven't talked to, Happy New Year, and um, we will get started. Same to you. All right, so here's the agenda. Um, I'll take us through a bit of uh, our strategic direction. We've had a lot of effort um, in 2020 around that. Uh, talk about our committees and the new structure we have. I'll turn it over to Ingrid. She'll take us through the bulk of the programming. Um, towards the end, we'll have a special recognition and thank you, and then we'll open it up for uh, discussion. So just to start, um, you know, again, last year was a interesting year. Uh, the business climate, of course, uh, we had to relook at ourselves as a council and make sure we were focused on the right things. So we did a bit of work. Um, we had a great company, Alvarez and Marsal, that took us through some transformation activities, allowed us to look at our strategy and what we want to focus on going forward. Um, you know, as I mentioned to Ingrid earlier this morning, uh, yeah, this time last year we were looking at some interesting things as far as Hey Archie, can you unmute yourself? Okay. Can everybody hear me now? Can we hear it now? Good. Um, so just a recap, we were uh, just talking about an organizational transformation that the council looked at last year uh, with the help of Alvarez and Marsal, uh, did a strategic plan for us. A lot of focus from the board on around uh, making sure that we are viable and uh, focus on what we need to do to deliver especially around membership value, both for corporations and uh, for our MBE membership. Um, and then, of course, Avoid has been very engaged and we'll look forward to continued engagement going into this year and make sure that we are ready to go to help the organization continue on its strategic mission. Um, so that is my start and my starting message. Okay. So just a recap, we um, that, um, just a bit on the work that we did to refocus our strategic direction. Uh, we had several work streams. Uh, the first part was really looking at our activities, what we do, what our mission, vision, um, and other focus areas are. Uh, we worked a lot around interviewing stakeholders. Many of you on the line hopefully participated in those interviews and then just did a lot of facilitated strategic work direction um, with those. So out of that, um, you know, we'll talk about um, our new delivery model, uh, which you see here, just looking to increase our value to our corporate members and MBEs. Uh, of course, with the work around our corporate members, you know, we provide great service in supplier vetting, uh, maintaining a local supplier data database and of course making sure our MBEs are prepared and capable to serve the needs of our corporate members. And so the benefits you see on the left there, just quality suppliers, of course, diversity programming um, support and then uh, social responsibility, efficient sourcing and then MBE matching to opportunities that are out in the corporate workspace. For the MBEs, uh, we are focused on certification of course, your training and development, making sure you're able to network with each other to build one capability and efficiency uh, that allows you to hopefully grow your businesses, you know, have access to corporate and government entities. Uh, we do a lot to match up with working capital um, and then make sure you have good operational improvements as you grow your capabilities, especially increasing classes um, as you grow and learn. Um, so basically, our piece is HMSCC pursues an effective marketplace through MBE development and strategic programming that facilitate commerce between members and MBEs. And you can see this is full circle um, as we go forward. 
One of the big things that we were able to accomplish last year, and one of the things that I noticed uh, upon joining the board was um, Ingrid and the team had a lot on their plates. And uh, we kind of really looked at it. I know there was a lot of work between Ingrid, her staff, the MBEs, the committees, the board, others um, to try to deliver those, but it just got to be a point where it seemed like a lot and it actually was a lot as we able we went through and actually uh, took a look at all the programming. So we worked with Alvarez and Marcel. We started out with over 50 programs. Uh, you can see those were listed. Um, we took a look at kind of boil that list down to about 37, which we kind of kept out. Some were just either not value added or ones we no longer performed or actually um, initiated, but were maybe in a programming booklet or something uh, from legacy programs. That gave us a starting point of 37 after we really looked at those and fashioned those out. And from that 37, we boiled that list down to a group of 24 where we really took a deep dive in looking at different uh, opportunities and making sure that those didn't overlap. They had good development. We were able to actually you know, work those and deliver on those. And um, after a bit of deep dive and a scoring model that we were helped with with Alvarez and Marcel, uh, we came down to 10 programs that will remain run by H HMSDC. And this year, um, of course, we'll have our signature events and provide key services and others, but there will be other events and then the committees will actually take on. So we wanted to make sure that our core group of HMSDC staff we're able to focus on primary programming and deliver the value to our membership. And also with this body of work, we actually boil down um, a number of committees and you'll see here, I'll indicate the five that remain. Um, and we really rolled up a lot of good work and I think this will be of very good value to the membership. So the first one is the Minority Enterprise Input Committee in BEIC, uh, led by Nanette Ray. Uh, we have the Supplier Diversity Advisory Council with Monica Campagna. Um, she'll be heading up that particular effort. Um, scholarship Fundraiser with Lanny Corral and Expo Committee, Tony Samper, and then Marketplace Committee, Karen Franklin. And you can see the descriptions and you know take a, a read of those, but those will be the five core committees that HMSDC will continue to utilize going forward this year in 2021. And thank you for all in your service to the uh, to the council and your work on those committees and beyond. Ingrid. Thanks, Archie. So at this point, I'll tell you where we're focused and, and what uh, I commit to you that we'll be doing in 2021 and beyond. And that's focusing on executing impactful program making sure that we drive operational efficiencies and certification uh, within the NMSDC guidelines, uh, connecting MBEs to business opportunities. That's core to what we've always done. Um, leverage those strategic relationships. We've been working really closely um, and looking at those organizations we partner with. And so we have a, a close relationship with the Greater Houston Partnership. Uh, and so we look for, uh, forward to telling you more about some of the activities that we're doing there um, and working with uh, our local minority chambers to ensure that our MBEs have support and uh, that they are able to get certified to access opportunities. And then we're going to support our corporate supplier diversity programs. Um, I think that it's important that we help our supplier diversity professionals to make sure that they have the information and the data uh, and support they need to grow opportunities for you within their corporations. So we have some best practices and redoing our, uh, our uh, revamping our supplier diversity toolkit um, as we've had some turnover in our supplier diversity area with some of the people who have been advocates for a very long time. It's important that the new supplier diversity folks that are coming into uh, the organization uh, have opportunities to um, gain from the insight and we can do knowledge transfer uh, from our long term advocates to our new supplier diversity leads. And then we want to recruit, rec uh, recruit new corporations and MBEs. We think that it's important 
that we begin to leverage more of our national corporate members to bring opportunities um, to you um, that uh, you may not have access to. We began that last year with bringing AT&T and some other uh, entities into the marketplace, and we'll continue to do that to make sure that you are, are hearing from some of our newer corporate members as we're recruiting new corporations uh, every year. So in terms of uh, HMSDC going forward, I think that there's a, um, a, a what we're calling HMSDC reimagined and our events and programs that Archie talked about. Uh, last year, I told uh, many of you as MBEs to make sure that you pivoted, make sure that you reimagined um, your company, your products and services, and how you delivered those to uh, your uh, customers as we worked our way through the economic downturn and COVID. So uh, I believe in practicing what I preach, and so that's uh, why we did what we did, and Archie walked you through that. So going forward, HMSDC will focus on what I call the 15 things, 10 developmental and marketplace connectors, and five signature events. So we will have our annual meeting, which we're doing today, our Chief Procurement Officer Summit um, that accompanies Expo, our Emerging 10 Awards that we partner with Houston Business Journal, of course, our Expo Business Opportunity Conference, and our scholarship fundraiser to raise money for our MBE developmental initiatives, both from the council's perspective and external developmental initiatives. So in terms of developing MBEs, one of the things that we focused on through the Alvarez and Marsal project is understanding where the true value is and aligning those with the needs of the corporate members uh, of the council. So we talked to corporations that have been with the council a long time, some of them who were new, government, private sector. Um, and so we made sure that we got a really good swath of data from both the corporate side and the MBEs. We did the same thing, talked to MBEs who had been with us a long time, some who were newer members, some who had left the council. Um, and so we wanted to make sure that we came up with those programs that are most valuable. So the way I'll explain this is that we've continued with our effort to target our developmental initiatives for our MBEs where they are. So the MBE Leadership Academy, these are going to be our flagship programs that we're going to ensure that we deliver the value to. Um, MBE Leadership Academy and Supplier Idol will be targeted for our Class 1 and Class 2 MBEs. That means the MBEs that are uh, generating revenue under $10 million. This will help you to grow your program, uh, improve your operational performance, and get the growth plan that you need in place in order to be able to understand your strategic direction and move your company forward and connect you to the capital that you need to be able to do so. Our CEO conversations program and our executive coaching program is targeted for our class three and class four MBEs. That are those revenue, those MBEs with revenue over $10 million, where we focus more on uh, not just uh, the strategic, but moving from operational leadership to focusing on those strategic uh, um, uh, strategic focus to make sure that you know how to grow your companies as you look at expanding um, and managing larger um, employee bases, understanding how to um, evaluate um, how you move forward in terms of your product and service offering and getting the value from those executive coaches, which are former C-suite executives um, and key advocates who have been with the organization a long time and who can help you to make those decisions and understand those problems and work through that growth, um, uh, uh, that growth part of the business as you can get larger. And then our Pathways to Excellence program, our Total Business Development program, and MBE Accelerator go across all. That's for all of our MBEs, um, and it's meant to be that way. Pathways to Excellence is an MBE self-assessment that we developed in conjunction um, with one of uh, our MBE's former board member and corporate executives, Eduardo Nunes from ExxonMobil, um, so that we can help you to truly understand how to manage your pathway to excellence. When you have those meetings with corporations and they say, well, you're not ready to do business with us, this addresses that issue. Um, this helps to provide you with an understanding of what corporations are looking for, where your gaps are, how to fill those gaps, and where the risk is. And so you'll have a better understanding of how to go forward 
with your company. The assessment also provides the training to close those gaps and will tie into total business development, which is uh, a program that's designed uh, for our MBE professional service firms. We've also heard from our MBEs that professional services are harder to purchase from corporations. And so total business development gives you an opportunity to access um, MBEs and get the professional services that you need to help grow and develop your company. So MBE professional service firms who are with us today, we're going to be inviting you to sign up to be uh, to participate in the program. You'll be asked to discount your services uh, 20 percent. HMSDC will pay 30 percent up to five hundred dollars. And you as the receiving MBE who needs developmental professional services, you're able to access those services for half the cost. So it allows the MBEs who are providing the professional service to build a portfolio of projects. Um, it allows the MBE who came to you for services to get the services that they need. And it fosters one of the big objectives of our MBEIC, which is to foster business relationships MBE to MBE. And then the MBE Accelerator. And the Accelerator is a developmental program. It's online training that will help you um, for to uh, access opportunities for training for yourself, for your senior leadership, and key members of your staff uh, through the Accenture online training catalog. So this itself is worth far more um, than what you pay in certification fees. And so going back to the value, these are some of the things that you will have access to, and especially the accelerator at no cost. And then our marketplace connectors. Uh, we're going to focus on several key programs in order to um, link MBEs to MBEs and MBEs to corporate members. So our how to do business sessions. Um, you'll see in the, um, the engagement opportunities bundles that were sent out to you this morning um, that there is a list of industries that we've targeted um, to have our, our sessions this year to show you how to do business in those industries with those specific companies and then creating matching opportunities for you to be able to showcase your products or services to those entities that are looking for them. The link program, we're expanding the link program, which was re originally part of the Strategic Teaming Alliance Committee or STAC, which has now morphed into our Marketplace co uh, Committee. And the LINK program is another program designed for MBEs to MBE. So as you're out there identifying opportunities, if you find that there's a need for you to partner or have a strategic alliance with another entity, whether it's a corporation or MBE, we can help you link to those MBEs or those corporate members to talk about the particular opportunity. So that it allows you to um, advance your company and create the capacity um, that you need to provide those services. And then we're expanding lunch with the president. Um, lunch with the president had typically been for our MBEs only. Um, and lunch with the president will extend to invite our corporate members to join us as well so that it gives you another key opportunity to network with some of our corporate representatives. Hear from me directly. Ask me questions about programs and services and anything else you want to talk about. That's one of the parts of the HMSDC that I love the most is being able to get the direct feedback from you in terms of uh, programs and services and how you can best utilize that. So that program will be expanding. So I want to give you a quick overview of our performance in 2020. Um, so HMSDC had uh, 29 key performance indicators that we tracked uh, across the different components of the organization, MBE services, corporate services, our key connectors, uh, organization initiatives, and then communication. So we hit the mark and, expand, and, and exceeded the mark on 24 of the uh, 29 objectives. And we missed a couple, um, and I'll explain why and show you that data to support that. So we had an 83% completion rate. Um, of exceeding our targets for uh, our KPIs for 2020, despite the environment that we were working through. In corporate services, um, we instituted our corporate business reviews, and those are meetings that we hold with our corporate members to get feedback um, on HMSDC programming, to understand what's going on in their programs, to provide advice, coaching, guidance, um, and increase our understanding of their current business environment. We targeted doing 24 of those two a month, and we were exceeded that with 33. 
Um, we wanted to improve the onboarding of our corporate members and make sure that as soon as that they were uh, joined the council, that they quickly had an onboarding to help them assimilate into the organization, um, to get connected to our committees and understand how to do business um, the HMSDC way, how to connect to our MBEs, how we could support their program development or as they started programs, how to get them guided in the right direction. And so we were able to complete that for all of our new members. And we do that within 30 days of joining the council. Um, our local corporate membership, we really um, took a hard look back in March when we were sort of all going into this remote working environment. And we began to see the stress that it was causing on our corporate members. And we had projected a loss in corporate membership as some companies um, went into bankruptcy, some companies uh, we're pulling back their sponsorships and their activities in those corporate co uh, nonprofit organizations they were inactive with. Um, and so we, we thought we were going to have to go back and, and, and do that. But for those companies that we lost, we were able to recruit new ones and we actually gained uh, an additional one. So when we talk about local corporate membership, this is not the HMSDC's total corporate membership. This is just those local companies um, who are actively involved in the council not the national companies that are also affiliated with HMSDC. So we targeted a 75% retention rate and we actually improved that with 104% retention. Um, our corporate uh, procurement referral notices, we talk about um, access to opportunities. And so um, I, I thought that this was important for us to track is how many opportunities are, are we providing? So that procurement alert, which comes out every Friday, um, to our MBEs and our corporate members, we targeted sending out 1,200 um, procurement referral notices. We actually sent out 1,648 um, different procurement referrals over the course of uh, 2020. And then we looked at the targeting those for sourcing opportunities. This is when a corporation uh, MBE comes and says, we need specific sourcing around these particular items. Can you give us a list of MBEs that can do this or that? We targeted 204 um, and we actually ended up with 518 individual sourcing opportunities. So this is HMSDC working on behalf of our MBEs and our corporate members to provide access to the MBEs that they want. So the referrals are happening. Some of them you may not know about, um, but we have been actively working and sourcing our MBEs and connecting them to opportunities. From an MBE services standpoint, um, we ended last year with 588 members and uh, we were looking to increase our certified MBE supplier base by 600 to 650, which we thought was really ambitious at the time. Um, but we actually ended up the year with 683 MBEs. So we're really excited about that, um, that our, core, our MBE membership is growing, but that means it's very important that we continue with those developmental efforts that we mentioned earlier. Also, we thought that because of uh, businesses, um, and as we know, our minority businesses have been hit and impacted the most by the COVID uh, recession. Um, and so we thought we would see a drop in MBE um, certification and uh, retention. So we created our recertification assistance program. So if you know of an MBE who is a member of the council, um, but is struggling right now and not having access to be able to recertify or the funds to recertify, please tell them to visit our website, hmsdc.org. On the homepage, there's a flyer that says recertification assistance. We immediately reached out to our corporate members and uh, identified some funds that we could allocate to help MBEs to be able to continue their certification because it's times like this that it's most important that you remain members of the council to get connected to those opportunities. Use this as an opportunity to develop your skills, expand those skills and be ready as we come out of the recession to take advantage of that. So we do have some funds available to help with the recertification fees. So it's not for new certification, but it's for a member benefit for those companies who had already previously been certified, um, but are um, financially needing some assistance. They can apply for the recertification and the council will assist um, with uh, those certification fees to allow them to stay active in the organization. So we exceeded our uh, retention goal of 75% and we had 111% uh, retention rate meaning we grew our membership far beyond that. 
Um, we offer training academies. We held our Pathways to Excellence program, which um, I think is a very exciting um, initiative uh, where we revamped it. It's all virtual in terms of um, being able to take the assessment, participate in the training courses, getting the support you need to be able to fill those gaps. And it is really important for you as MBEs to take advantage of this program. Corporations are looking forward to it. They were all excited about it when we launched it. Um, and we're really seeing results from these first classes that went through. We had three waves go through um, this year. And so we had 70 participants when we were initially targeting 50. So we're really excited about that. Um, we had our CEO conversations. We targeted having four sessions um, and we completed those. So some of our speakers this year were the mayor of the city of Houston, uh, Bob Harvey, the president and CEO of the Greater Houston Partnership, Armando Perez, who is the executive vice president responsible for the uh, Houston and uh, the Southwest region for HEB groceries. And we had um, Brian Kaufman, president and CEO of Motiva, participate in that program. So we were really excited that we were able to get those caliber of presenters and speakers for our CEO conversations program. And as we mentioned, Supplier Idol is a key part of developing your program. Uh, I mean, but developing your pitch. So if you have not gone through Supplier Idol, I think that it's one of those essential programs that SADAC participates in to make sure that you're prepared and ready to present your best foot forward when you're talking with our corporate members. And finally, around our key connectors, um, we conducted our annual meeting last year. We held the business, we held three business opportunity conferences. We held three how to do business with sessions. We had two industry forums. We had eight lead conversation sessions and we had one matchmaker. So we didn't connect with that because we initially targeted two, but that was an intentional decision that I made that we would not hold a second matchmaker based on um, the staff that we had in place um, at the time and what uh, and being able to deliver a quality program. So we decided not to host a second MBE matchmaker in 2020. So I'll go on to staff. So as Archie mentioned at the beginning, part of what the Alvarez and Marsal project was, was to look at um, our operational efficiency. That, so that included our staff, that included our committees, um, and that included uh, the key processes that we had in the organization. So from that, they uh, uh, recommended some staffing changes. And so many of you know that we were uh, highly understaffed at the um, uh, throughout 2020. Uh, and part of that was intentional because I did not want to hire staff and try to fit the staff into the organization, but to hire the staff that was needed to support the organization um, as we imagined it going forward. So our new staff organization structure will be me. We have three members of our leadership team. Uh, one is still yet to be put in place. Uh, Angela Freeman, I'm happy to say, will be rejoining HMSDC staff as the Senior Director of Corporate Services. Those of you who have been around the organization for a long time uh, knows that Dick and I have hired Angela over 20 plus years ago. I hate to date her as well, um, but Angela uh, served as a key part of our staff. She was the Director of Corporate Services, so she understands our corporate members. Um, she understands the organization, so there will be very little sort of ramp up time needed. Um, for her to get caught up on our new direction and our key programs. I think uh, Angela will add some additional value from her time when she left us back in 2017 um, to pursue an opportunity on the corporate side with MGM Grand Hotel in, um, uh, in Las Vegas. Um, she's moved back to Houston. Uh, I told her uh, when she left um, that if she ever wanted to come back home, um, and which I always mean, and you hear me say it, that you're always part of HMSDC's family um, and to come back home, she's coming back home. So we're really excited about that. Uh, Genera Theory has performed just spectacularly in our corporate services division and um, has been promoted to operations and project manager. So um, in Genera's role, she'll talk a little bit about that to you shortly, but I think that she has some key uh, skills that will make um, this transition to this position, not only a growth and developmental opportunity for her, as I really see her as a key part of the organization going forward, that she could become a director of corporate services and eventually 
um, president of this organization or something else. So she's a little firecracker, very talented, very smart, very efficient, uh, and customer focused. And so I think uh, ensuring that we are able to deliver on uh, our promises to you and the projects that we undertake over the course of 2021, uh, she'll be an essential part of that. We'll be hiring a new director of MBE services. Um, that position um, will be posted uh, next week. And uh, we're looking to have all of the positions um, filled by the end of 2020, uh, by the end of February at the very latest. Jared Jefferson, who many of you may have worked with, is part of um, uh, our certification entity and is in the MBE services area. Um, Jared uh, will also be promoted to MBE development manager. Um, he has a master's degree, uh, sales background, and uh, a passion around developmental programs. Uh, I think he'll be essential into this initiative. So if you're wondering what are the best programs that we have for you to fit into it, how do you um, participate? And he'll be in contact with many of you um, to talk to you about making sure that you're taking advantage of HMSDC and the programming that we offer. Uh, so we're, we're excited about that move. And so, of course, uh, although he'll still be supporting in some certification, we'll be adding another certification specialist to the organization. So by uh, the end of February, we'll be fully staffed. I will make sure that we communicate to you um, those, those changes once we have the entire organization in place. Um, whereas last year we had um, Calendly implemented so that um, the management team or the leadership team, you could access us and, and find time on our calendars to talk to us um, about anything that you wanted to. Uh, I extended that to the entire staff. I think that it's important um, as we provide support services and customer service to you that you're able to be able to reach uh, anybody in the organization and find time to have those discussions. Uh, I know that I've benefited from having that, and so we're going to extend that to the entire staff. So you'll be able to um, book time, uh, go onto our website, go into the staff, and then be able to book time with any member of the staff based on the availability of those time frames. So we're excited about that. Um, you guys seem to be able to enjoy that and being able to um, know exactly how to reach us and get some time on the calendar with us. So we'll be expanding that. So that is, I think, a very big improvement. So again, Angela uh, will be joining us. She'll be uh, officially um, uh, ready to take calls at the beginning of February. Um, and so we're excited to um, have her aboard um, and uh, look forward to working with her in the corporate services role. Now I'm going to ask Janera um, to share a couple uh, words with you um, as she moves into this ro new role, how she sees the role, and um, uh, anything else she'd like to share with you about her new position. Janera. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I would like to first and foremost thank you all for continuing to support HMSDC as we move into this uh, year. And also thank you, Ms. Robinson, for your very kind words. Um, I really appreciate that. So in the new role of operations and project manager, I will be representing HMSDC at all the external and community events. Um, I will be handling the committee administration, um, the marketplace events. I will be focusing on program management, logistics and scheduling, project execution, event planning, knowledge management, grant coordination and support. Um, I am very excited to be moving into this role. I've been at HMSTC now for two years. I have put a lot of work and a lot of work ethic into advocating for MBEs and showing that this is definitely um, a a passion for me and exactly where I want to be. Um, so I will bring that exact same work ethic and firecracker spirit to this new role and assisting everything in, in the ways that I can. So thank you for the opportunity. I'm very excited to serve you all. Fantastic. And Jared. Uh, good afternoon, you all. Uh, thank you, Ms. Robinson, for the opportunity to speak today to the uh, MBEs who are attending our annual meeting. I'm excited about the MB development manager position because I feel like um, after the Alvarez and Marsal consulting, one of the things that was taken away was that we really need to make sure that the value of HMSDC is presented to our MBEs outside of just having a certificate. 
that says that I'm a minority owned business. And uh, just being in a role where I'm able to be a part of that value add and get to know a lot of y'all. I haven't been with the organization very long. However, I've been on the certification side. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to getting to know some of the MBEs that have been, who have been with HMSDC for a long time. And uh, thank you, that's all I got. Awesome. So I'll talk a little bit about what's next and what you can um, expect. So I'm gonna ask this, and I call these your next six steps. So part of what uh, came out of that project of, as well was understanding that we really needed to um, to ask and direct besides providing information to you to to um, to have actionable prompts. So here are my six actionable prompts to you guys for 2021. First, I want to make sure that you give us your feedback and feedback for us is important. We know that this is a, a transition. Uh, from uh, how we've operated in the past. And so we won't get everything right. And uh, many of you know, I will say all the time that I am always willing to try something new. And if it doesn't work, we'll figure out if it didn't work because it was a bad idea or if it was a problem with execution. Uh, but with Genera um, in charge of ensuring that um, we take all those steps that we need to take, that we do the things that we say we're gonna do, I think we'll be successful. But we really want your feedback. I really want your feedback. I think it's important for us to understand how we can best help you, especially in this virtual environment. It's even more important um, that we improve communication. And so um, the extension of being able to schedule time with us through um, uh, our Ask Me Anything um, channel, I think is essential to that. <laughs> I'm gonna ask that you sign up for our uh, Houston Methodist Vaccine Town Hall, um, which is this Friday. So I will just say that I know that there are a lot of concerns out there about vaccines, but here is an opportunity to learn and hear directly from the medical professionals here in our market. Uh, I know we watch a lot on the news every day about how vaccines are being rolled out, who, what's the effectiveness. Come get the right information directly from those professionals. So we will have two doctors from Houston Methodist who will be providing um, that information directly to you. So we really invite you to join that. Um, the, um, the invitation, Genera, is where? On, is it on the um, weekly alert or where can they find that to register? Yes, the invitation is gonna be in the weekly alert and on in the Wednesday's alert. Okay, so this afternoon, you should be receiving uh, your Wednesday afternoon alert and they'll have information um, in there to register for the Houston Methodist um, Town Hall. Uh, Houston Methodist is managing uh, the registrations, so that will be going directly to them and they will be sending you the informational link um, to, uh, to join on uh, the 29th. So please make sure that you participate in that. Information is powerful. There is no limits. If you'd like to share this information with your friends, um, with your employees, um, it's important that we have right information, especially in our community. So it's important um, that you do that. And so uh, one of the other commitments that we made was that we're going to be communicating um, with you in terms of, um, we're gonna be communicating with you in terms of um, our upcoming events, no, no less than 30 days prior to. We wanna make sure that you have plenty of time to register, to participate, because we're putting a lot of time and effort to make sure that we're uh, providing you with quality programs and that you're getting the services that you deserve. And so we're gonna ask that uh, you participate in those and, and show us um, the same love that we're giving you by taking advantage of your membership and all the benefits that go along with it. By doing that, we have asked you to join a committee. I will tell you that we are so excited about the response that we've gotten so far from our MBEs and our corporate members who are stepping up to join us in our committees. Um, our committee leaderships are excited about it. We wanna make sure that um, we have, um, to get the most out of HMSDC, you have to put something into HMSDC. And by joining one of our standing committees, it's the best way for you to be connected to the organization and know about what's happening and how to best utilize the organization. So I'm asking you if you have not already signed up for one of our standing committees, 
please contact Genera Theory. You see her email right there so that we can get you onboarded to one of the committees. It's in vitally important. And thank you for all of you who have stepped up to join the committee who haven't participated in the past. And thank you for all of those who have continued um, to participate in committees and actively support the organization. It means the world to me, um, our board of directors, our staff. Um, and then we have opportunities for supplier idle. So you re uh, remember that that was one of the KPIs that we missed um, in 2020. I refuse for us to miss that, um, that KPI in 2021 because the program is so important. It allows you um, to hone those skills as I talked about and present to corporate members. Um, I remember a story that Linda Graves, our vice chair of SEDAC told us about um, that she's learned a lot about our MBEs through there and by participating in Supplier Idol, um, she's actually identified several companies that she's invited in to participate and present in front of Centerpoint. So it's another great way of being able to market your company and get some honest feedback on your presentation and make sure that you're putting the best foot forward when you're, um, when you're presenting to corporations. This morning at 8 a.m., you also receive the 2021 Engagement Opportunity Bundle. This bundle is not just for corporations, but it's for MBEs too. It's important and it's critical that you support the council in our activities. I know for some of you that it may be very difficult to do so, um, but this is an opportunity to participate. There's individual um, registration um, opportunities as well. It's important that we kind of know what you value, what's important to you, and that you support those programs um, that, uh, that support you. So please take a look at the 2021 uh, Engagement Opportunity Bundle and identify an opportunity to support the council. It's a great way to get visibility to your organization, even in a virtual environment, um, and a great way to help us to be able to deliver the value that we seek to do. So please uh, take a look at that. And then read about the HMSDC programs and sign up for them. Most of our programs are going to begin in earnest in March. We wanted to make sure that we had an opportunity to talk to you about it today, let you know what those programs are going forward, and then give you about a month to register for those programs. Do not wait to the last minute to register for these programs. Um, we are really targeting to really have a waiting list. Um, for some of these uh, programs because I truly believe in the value um, that you'll get from them. Every single program that's on that list, um, our MBEs and our corporate members who have rated the value to the cost as being um, uh, the cost to be less uh, and the value to be much higher. And that's why they're still remaining um, as a key program of HMSDC. So take a look at those programs. Applications will be uh, through submittable and you should be able to sign up for those programs in about two weeks. So we wanted to give you an opportunity to look at that inside that uh, opportunity uh, bundle, the engagement opportunity bundle um, is a description of those programs. We listened to you last year. You'll see a schedule of all of the dates related to those programs. So you can actually plan out your entire HMSDC year by looking at that uh, equal uh, that engagement opportunity um, bundle. So if you're going to look at one of the programs, you can see how those dates work with your calendar. You can plug them in now to make sure that you're available to participate. So with that, I am going to look at a special recognition that we have. Shay McFerrin, have you been able to join us yet? I know that she had another meeting and um, yes, and I'm here. Perfect. All right. So, Shay, I am going to turn it over to you at this point for our special recognition. Um, yes. Yeah, so we want to take the opportunity for those of you um, that are just joining. Welcome to HMSDC. I look forward to hopefully engaging with you all in this wonderful year of 2020. But we want to take a look back at our past and really say thank you to um, the person that has been advocating on behalf of HMSDC and MBEs um, tremendously over the last two years is Anthony Curtis, um, our outgoing MBEIC chair. He has done amazing jobs in front of um, everyone and behind the scenes as well. You don't know how many times tirelessly Anthony has worked at making sure that the voice of the MBEs is heard not only on a local level 
um, but on a national level as well. And so we want to say thank you to Anthony for her, all his hard work, his dedication, and we are surely going to miss his leadership yeah. and the ideas and, and thoughts that he's put forward to helping HMSCC and other MBEs rise. He has been an advocate for working together with others. Um, I believe there's some MBEs out there that have contracts or have worked with him together to get gain contracts. And so we want to just say thank you for all your hard work, all your service. And um, it has been an absolute pleasure to work with Anthony. So therefore, on behalf of the MBEIC chair committee and HMSDC, we're going to provide Anthony with a couple of tokens of appreciation. One will be delivered to him tomorrow. Um, at his home residence, and then the other one Ingrid has and will deliver or we'll get it in the mail to him. So we want to say thank you, um, and we hope that you enjoy this small token of our appreciation for all your hard work. Anthony, are you on, our, on the line? Is there anything that you'd like to say? Yeah, thank you for all those kind words. Uh, can, can you hear me? <clears throat> yes. We yeah, thanks it. so much. Uh, I mean, obviously, I couldn't have done any of it without Shay, who was my number two, and couldn't have done any of it without we couldn't have done any of it without the hard work of the committees, all the committee chairs, co-chairs, all the volunteers. So, I mean, as we all are aware, 2020 was quite a year, uh, and nothing went as we planned. <laughs> and so, but you know, we kept trudging along. And so, again, you know, thank thanks so much. Uh, it was certainly my pleasure to serve, and uh, I'll continue to serve in whatever capacity I'm needed. Thank you. And I will tell you, um, moving into um, that role was really an opportunity for me to really understand um, the passion that um, Anthony has for MBE development. Um, you know, he did a great job as chair as pushing me to do things that um, uh, maybe I was more hesitant about doing and thinking outside the box. So thank you for being persistent. Um, thank you for um, your leadership, and I look forward to continuing to work uh, um, to with you um, in the future. So thank you again for being one of those MBEs that have stepped up and being able to make sure um, that we're advocating and doing everything we possibly can to move minority business development um, in the right direction. And in that spirit, I want to give a huge, huge thank you to our outgoing MBIC chair and co-chair, um, Shay and Anthony, as well as our new chair and co-chair, uh, Nanette Ray and, uh, and Kathy. Um, you guys have been so great to work with. And when I tell you that th this was a dinner that um, they invited me to, to really learn more about uh, each other, um, to talk about HMSDC and how we're moving forward and the transition that they made so that it was seamless um, to help Nanette and Kathy get off to a great start um, for 2021. And so this is one of those things that I think you can't get anywhere else um, except the family camaraderie that we have at HMSDC. So thank you guys for a great dinner and thank you for everything that you do on behalf of HMSDC. And finally, I want to thank our sponsors. These are some of the companies that stepped up uh, in 2020 um, early to uh, volunteer and, and um, show their support for HMSDC in 2021. So thank you to Chase, Cigna, Bank of America, HEB, ConocoPhillips, Floor, Vistra, and Shell for stepping up and being sponsors of our annual meeting. So thank you so, so very much. And now we're going to open it up for a discussion. Um, and uh, those questions, you can either raise your hand if you'd like to ask us directly or submit those questions um, through the chat. Janera will moderate those and it can be directed to me, to Archie, to any of our committee chairs that are with us um, or the staff. And uh, we wanted to make sure that we had enough time to be able to talk to you and answer um, all of your questions and um, and just get an opportunity to engage. So, Janera? Yes, so we do have a question that was posted in the chat when we were looking at the KPIs. Um, the question was, how do you get 111% of the MBE 
retention? So we used a formula that we received from the national office. So it basically meant that we re we had a 100% retention, um, but we grew membership over that 100% retention. So we had an 11% increase and 100% uh, retention uh, in terms of loss of membership. So it's not a 100% retention of um, those same MBEs, but it's 100% retention in terms of the number of MBEs that we were currently serving in uh, 2020 and the additional MBEs that were added above that number in 2021. But it's a formula that we received from NMSDC and how they calculate the, key PI, the KPIs that they judge us against as regional councils. Looks like we don't have many other questions in the chat. A lot of it is just congratulations and kudos to everyone else. So um, if you have any questions from today, please place that in the chat or like Ms. Robinson said, raise your hand and um, you can speak directly. This is Tony Sanford. I, hey, Angie, sorry. I know that we could not have arrived at the numbers that Ingrid showed without the entire participation of the staff, which is incredible, and the commitment of the MBEs as well as the corporate members. So congratulations on a fabulous year. Thank you very much, Tony. We all appreciate that. Okay, Jewel has a, a comment next. Hey, thank you so much. I am very excited about what I'm hearing and all of the activities. It appears that we may be on track to regain Council of the Year from NMSDC. So I would love for that to be one of the objectives that we continue to have because we can do it. And, and congratulations to both of you and welcome back, Angela Freeman, excited. <laughs> <laughs> we are, I, I think she's gonna be fabulous, uh, Jewel, um, you know, with, us having such, um, you know, um, new programs and sort of a new direction. I think it's important to have somebody that has that history. You know, we lost that when Constance left. Um, I have some of it from my time um, at the council, but then there was the gap when I was on the other side of the table. So um, I'm really excited. I think that we're gonna learn a lot and she's uh, bringing a lot from her experience um, on the corporate side. So I think it's gonna make her even more effective director of corporate services. So we did have a question. Um, it was asked, how do MBEs join a committee? And so you can actually send an email to me. I'll throw my email in the chat, letting me know which committees you would like to join. We also did blast out in last week's um, Wednesday alert an opportunity for you to sign up directly on a Microsoft form indicating which committee you would like to join. So. Um, those are the two options you have, but if you let me know, I'll get you onboarded. Perfect. What's next? I see Dave's hand. We just hey, made him to unmute itself. Oh, Dave, you might have forgot to unmute. There, can you hear me? I'm yes. Okay, I'm so sorry. I hate being that guy that doesn't unmute himself. So forgive me for that. <laughs> um, so not not so much a, a question, but a, a comment. I, you know, I th I think the year that has passed is really, I, you know, I'm not sure that we have given it uh, proper credit, despite having gone through all, you know the PowerPoint slides. But you know, the the strategic uh, refresh, I guess, reimagine. You know. Um, that's difficult work, uh, and you know to have to have accomplished all of that, you know, in 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 this uh, virtual environment that we work in, uh, that we're working in, I think is really you know really notable. And you know the rationalization of the programs, that difficult work, you know, these programs and the events and so forth that we all hold so dear, and being able to you know turn loose of of those which. Um, you know, perhaps have not provided the kind of value that that the you know that the stakeholders require. You know, is difficult, and to have gone through that process in such a thoughtful, strategic sort of uh, constituent 
top of mind way, I, I just think is is really great. And and the fact that the council has taken in all the feedback in recent times and taken a good hard look at you know the service delivery model and made these changes, you know, I I just think is really great. And I just want to say congratulations to everyone who who was a part of it. I I think it's really uh, remarkable that the the changes and the improvements and the processes that um, have been changed. So congratulations. Thank you. And, and Dave, I want to say thank you to Chevron. I think that this is one of those things that comes from those uh, corporate business reviews. I know that we talked about um, some of the challenges that we had as an organization and some of the things that we wanted. And when Alvarez and Marsal came to, to you guys and said, are there some organizations out there that are nonprofits we can help? Um, uh, I quickly told uh, Chris at that point, yes. And so I want to thank you guys for um, bringing that to us because that was literally almost a, I hate to put dollar figures on it, but almost a half a million dollars worth of consulting um, over several months that um, and, and a team of two partners um, in the firm, not just sort of the consultants that are on the ground, but we had two engaged partner level um, executives involved in this process. So I want to thank you um, for that help and that support. And, and I think that that's some of the value that comes if we're able to share where our challenges are and understand your challenges. It helps us to better um, be able to uh, find ways in which we can support one another. So thank you, Chevron, for making that happen. Well, you're nice to say so. And thank you for that. I just think, you know, it's a lesson for us all that you know, sometimes we do face challenges and, you know, there is a tendency you might, you, can, you may get frustrated, you may get disenchanted and your tendency, your instinct may be in those instances to withdraw, um, you know, but the, you know, that of course is not the right response. You know, the, the right response is to really dig deeper and see, you know, what you can do to help address those problems and um, you know, all in this together. And um, you, you guys have done a great job in the last year. Perfect. Um, who do we have next, Janera? April Jones has her hand raised. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes, can. Hi, hi, Ingrid. Hi. hi, everybody. So my hat goes off to everybody. I'm just, I'm, I'm a new MBE joining last year. So with COVID, there's just been a lot of, you know, I'm still trying to feel my way through, but I'm here to help in any way I can coming from the oil and gas industry for over 20 years. I want to know, Ingrid, um, what kind of um, uh, uh, leveraging are we going to have with other MBEs? Um, and I think we talked about this before in, an, in another meeting, but um, so I want to, I just want to kind of understand, are, are we going to have, have, you know, a chance to leverage with other MBEs? And also, do we have a list that we can go to or are we going to have a list or maybe develop a list at some point to say these MBA, these particular MBEs do this, for example, professional service, uh, something else. So we can just go down a list which makes it easier for everybody and trying to understand it. For me, trying to navigate through HMSDC. So I just want to understand how are how are you and your team going to be tackling these issues so that we MBEs can better understand how to navigate and how to help you as well? Because I'm here to help as well, but I don't know what I don't know. So I want to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm here. Perfect question. So a couple different things um, to help you navigate through that. Um, what we are going to be doing is revamping our MBE ambassador program and for our corporate members, we're creating a corporate ambassador program. So we're going to be asking some of those MBEs um, who are, are, are uh, maybe newer um, and some of those, especially those that have been a, around a really long time um, to help us um, and join and become ambassadors um, so that you will have sort of a buddy or an ambassador that you can call to ask about different programs, uh, what are effective ways of, you know, reaching out to uh, corporate members, um, how, how to be able to, um, you know, what have they found effective um, to be able to do that. So we'll be um, increasing the number of ambassadors that we have so that the workload isn't um, just on a couple people. 
uh, with 683 MBEs. And I guarantee you, if I run a list of those by the year that they got certified, we have tons. And believe me, we'll be reaching out to them um, and asking them to participate. Um, but we know that that requires a lot of time on their part. So we're looking at putting some incentives together for those that give even more to be able to help other MBEs to be able to successfully understand and navigate the organization. In terms of the programming, a lot of what you're talking about is going to be in our marketplace committee. So the link program is the one that we talked about where if you are looking, you see a, a bid opportunity and you may be able to provide two of the three things that they want on a scope of services and you need to identify another MBE that can provide that third thing. You can use the link program to be able to reach out to us and ask us for MBEs in that area and we'll be able to connect you to those. Um, I think uh, our chair, um, Nanette, had that experience last year. She won a contract um, with an organization and she needed somebody to do one piece that she didn't have as a service in-house. She reached out to us we identified some companies. She was able to find another MBE that could provide that third piece of services and it created an opp another opportunity for an MBE and she was able to perform and win the contract. Um, so the link program is one that's going to do that. And then most importantly, um, you know, a part of Genera's new role is again to make sure we get those operational um, improvements in place. So uh, we have had on our to-do list and we've started and stopped just based on capacity, um, implementing a uh, CRM system. And so we are, our goal is to have that system up by the end of Q1. And I'll let Janera and maybe Clark, who's our IT consultant and MBE, um, might have some additional uh, information they want to add to that. But the CRM will allow you to be able to create your profiles in there, allow you to be able to search for other MBEs. It's going to kind of work. And uh, Lord Clark, please don't kill me on the technology piece. Um, but you, you'll be able to eventually the system is sort of smart and it'll be able to find the type of firms that you're always looking for and be able to suggest links to you of other MBEs um, to be able to do that. Um, so Genera will be making sure that we keep our project plan on, 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 um, on track uh, and that we have that. So MBEs and corporations will be able to perform their own searches. For our corporate members, we'll still be able to do the sourcing for you if you request that we do that. Um, but you will also have the opportunity to be able to search yourself. Genera, or Clark, anything you want to add? Uh, this is Clark. I think you pretty much summed it up. I would only like to add to that, that we know that there's been quite a few requests and requirements from both uh, the MBE and the the uh, buyer side. I think the CRM will address that in terms of MBE to MBE collaboration, as well as searching and discussing um, different opportunities in the collaborative space. So it is definitely a communication tool and a search tool. And we look to um, see everyone onboarded for the end of Q1. Just kind of where we are in the process now, there was just a recent meeting identifying pilot testers that will occur over the next two weeks. And so just beyond that, the uh, membership and community at large will start receiving communications regarding your first steps for home. Great. And because it has a lot of uh, uh, tools in the system, we'll be turning them on um, at intervals so that we get people sort of comfortable with it and then we'll be able to roll out, roll out additional uh, modules. But we want to make sure that we we're, we have opportunity to test it um, and that we have all the information in. And with the growth of the number of MBEs we had um, in uh, 2020, uh, we need to refresh that data and, and uh, uh, make sure we have everybody in, in the tool. Janera, anything you want to add? Nope, you and Clark summed it up pretty well. All right, who's next? Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I see no hands raised. Let me overlook again. Nope, I see no hands raised and we've had no okay. new questions. I see one. Uh, Carlos? Oh, I don't see yes. that. Sorry, Carlos, go ahead. No, that's fine. Um, well, first of all, I want to kind of 
add to everyone's everyone's sentiment of congratulations. I thought I think that um, the HMSDC leadership has done a great job navigating 2020. Um, it's been challenging for everyone, and you know to keep on pushing and increasing numbers is it's great for you guys and for everybody. Um, we're also fairly new to the HMSDC and. We're learning how to navigate through uh, the different corporate programs. One question we had is, is there a link between uh, different consoles, uh, regional consoles like the Houston one and Dallas one uh, that you can leverage to kind of uh, also explore different opportunities within different regions being part of the one in Houston? I tried to kind of go through the Dallas one, uh, but it hasn't the responsive is not as great as the Houston one. Let's put it that way. Uh, I'm not saying that you guys will, you know, <laughs> but uh, just curious on. Well, I appreciate that. But yes, so there's two different ways. Um, so one is that you can, because we're your home council, your certification lies with us, but you can become what's called a subscriber to Dallas. And so there is a fee to be a subscriber, but it basically gives you the same member uh, rights as it does here in Houston. So you'll get, if they have something like a weekly alert, procurement opportunities, all of those things, you'll get that. And I know that many of the entities, just like we have in Houston that accept our certification, um, there are entities in Dallas that accept their certification. So by becoming a subscriber, you'll also get a certificate that says that you're a member of Dallas. So then you could leverage that as well as not only hearing about what's happening in the Dallas region and participate as a member, in their council, but you can then also leverage that certification with the other certifying entities in the Dallas Fort Worth area. So you can become a subscriber to any of the other 22 regional councils um, in the network. Um, another thing that um, I think is uh, very exciting is NMSDC, our national organization, recently announced um, that they are opening up uh, the national database to all MBEs to be able to source. So if you're, let's say, looking at a federal project in DC and you are looking for a partner in that market, you'll now be able to source um, MBEs and see who's out there in any uh, NMSDC regional uh, council across the country. So that is um, what we had once deemed a quick win, but we're glad to have it. Um, uh, and, and so you will now be able to source the national database. Um, Lynette or Anthony, do you remember when they said that that feature will be available to all MBEs? Yes, Ingrid, this is uh, Nanette. They plan to launch that to the chairs uh, by the end of this month, and hopefully by the end of February, it will be launched to all of the MBEs. Perfect. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Any other questions? Okay, well, while you guys think of it, um, uh, I'd like to take this opportunity. Um, Angela has uh, uh, joined us, and um, I know that she's trying to get settled back here in Houston. Uh, so, Angie, I don't know if there's anything that you would like to say. Yes. Uh Hello, everybody. I'm very excited about coming back home again. Uh, HMSDC is a passion I always had. I had a great ride here working with Corporate America in Las Vegas with MGM Resorts. But I'm looking forward to coming back home to everyone and um, working as a team to grow the council to become Council of the Year again. So we're going after that. And uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm very excited. Look forward to meeting all of you and look forward to reuniting with my old family again. So um, I will be home Friday. Sorry for coming on late. I had issues with movers and everything this morning because I'm finalizing everything. But uh, thank you all for your support. Look forward to another great year uh, with HMSCC. And thank you, Ingrid, for bringing me back aboard again. Awesome. Thank you, Angie. Um, and I think that we also have, I'm going to put him on the spot, but I, I see that uh, Dick has been able to join us. And so um, as our fierce leader for over 31 years, um, uh, Dick, uh, I, I'd like to get some feedback from you. And um, I know that you've told me that 
and have always reached out um, and said anything that you can do to continue to support the council, you will. So um, I'm just going to tell you now in front of them that I will be reaching out. I have a couple of ideas of how you can help. And so we're going to talk about that and um, and uh, offline and um, and have you back. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I just want to say, I just think you're so right on track. This is really exciting news uh, at both the national and the local level. I'm really excited for HMSTC, even more excited for the members of HMSTC. Angela, oh man, I'm so glad you're back. This is, uh, this is a, a phenomenal move by HMSTC, long overdue in, in terms of its uh, uh, restructuring, refocusing, uh, re-envisioning, and uh, I just salute you, the board, uh, uh, the leadership uh, and the staff for making this the organization that it is, more importantly, the, the organization that it's going to become. Thanks, Dick. So just like I tell you, everybody else, you know, it, we're, we're like the mob, you know, you never, you never leave, you, you can't get out. So we're going to definitely be coming back and, and, um, and getting your support and guidance. But I will tell you, I was so excited when Angela called me one day and said, you know, when you said um, if I ever was coming back to Houston, um, that uh, I could always come home. Um, did you really mean that? And I was like, I absolutely meant that. And so the timing just ended up to, to work out perfectly. Um, and uh, so we're very excited um, to, to welcome her back. So um, I hope that, uh, that you enjoy um, you know, coming back home, uh, being with family, being with your HMSDC family, um, and getting to know our, our new staff because they are phenomenal. They truly are. All right. Well, are there any other questions in the chat or any question anybody wants to shoot out to us or we'll end up giving you 14 minutes back? We do have a question from Mr. Daryl Groves asking, how does he opt into the MBE to MBE directory? I'm going to I'll withdraw that question and that answered it well. Uh, okay. That it, it looks like everyone's automatically opted in now, right? OK. Unless they elected to opt out. That's great. Okay. Lynette, what was your answer? Sorry. Uh, yes, unless um, MBE has specifically opted out, everyone will be opted in to the MBE directory. MBE to MBE search directory. Yeah, and and I did just do a search and there was 645 in there, so that's great. Mm -hmm. They're going to have them all uploaded, so. <laughs> awesome, and some of them don't show uh, Houston because we're not their uh, lead council, so that includes our subscribers. All right, um, and so are there any questions for Archie in terms of um, the leadership direction and the board? No. Oh, Archie, you're getting off easy today. I don't mind, but happy to answer anything that comes <laughs> up. Okay. Sorry, this year has not turned out the way, last year didn't turn out the way anybody planned. I had expected to get more, to, <laughs> to know more of everybody uh, differently, but uh, we kind of had to cancel all the face-to-faces. So for those that I did get to meet uh, over the past year or so, um, that's been great. Uh, hopefully 2021, the latter part, will change that and we'll be able to get together again. Absolutely. So that brings up a good point, Archie. So when you guys look at the um, uh, engagement opportunities, um, we are planning for uh, many of our activities. We are still planning for them to be virtual um, with, with everything being unsure around COVID. Um, we're hoping that the latter part of the year will be able to do so, but even Expo uh, will be in September. And um, and so the trade show itself will still be virtual because that would be too many people in a consolidated space. Um, but if we do have the opportunity, I believe that the Expo Committee, we're looking at potentially being able to at least do a reception um, outside. Archie and I discussed that earlier, um, but being able to have some sort of way that we could have 
um, some activity in which we're able to network in an open environment, maybe an outside when it's not so hot, since we won't do it in August. I told him that y'all said y'all wanted to be outside in July. So, you know, but <laughs> he, he said, no, we don't want to do that. So um, no. probably <laughs> Q4, we'll be able to have something so that we can still mask up um, and socially distance, but be able to um, have some event in which we're able to get together and network in person. Um, and uh, and you guys, those that know me well, know that I'm a hugger and and I will just share a quick story. When we were um, preparing for Expo and Archie and his wife showed up, I went to go give a hug and they were like, no, 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 no. And I was like, oh yeah, I gotta remember. I gotta remember, I can't hug anymore. So, um, so I'm looking forward to the time in which we can um, we can hug one another as the family that we are and um, and, and meet in person um, and enjoy each other's company and getting to know one another. This has really made it uh, more important that we stay connected and understand the importance of that in those relationships. So if we have no more questions, I wanna thank you for joining us for our annual meeting. Um, I want to let you know that we are planning to put out our annual report. It'll be out mid-February, so uh, look forward to sharing that with you as well. Um, you received some of the highlights uh, already, um, but we are going to continue with our quarterly um, updates to you. I received a lot of positive feedback about our quarterly reports, so we will be uh, giving you a quarterly report um, on uh, everything that we're doing, including a committee report out, which i um, uh, we're going to do this year so that um, if you're not serving on one particular committee, um, you'll still be able to see the KPIs and what they're working on and how they're doing it. And earlier this morning, I had the brainchild and it's going to sound really crazy, but all of a sudden I was like, oh, in the annual, the quarterly reports, I think we'll call it committee corner. So we'll have a committee corner um, where we'll be able to provide some information to you about what's happening in those committees over the course of uh, that quarter. So. Thank you again for joining us. We really appreciate it. I really do truly appreciate all the support that you guys have given. Um, if there's anything that we can do to help support you, anything you want to share with us, um, anything that you see that we can do better, um, please let us know. And when we are doing things well, please share those as well. So thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your support. Bye. Bye. You're on mute, Janera. I don't know what you were saying. Oh.